Hello and welcome to the Star Wars Hyperdrive Coding Challenge, a challenge that actually requires us to troubleshoot and correct code that allows the Millennium Falcon Hyperdrive to function. So the first step is to open up the copy for Star Wars Hyperdrive Challenge code by Mr. Erdreich here. When we actually click on it, we have nothing functioning uh, other than looking at our flashing red warning lights in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon and the space of bisque in front of us here. The first thing we have to do is actually create a fork of the program, which will place it in our own documents. Uh, it's important that you create a fork because if you just copy the code, you may lose parts of the code, especially because there are multiple tabs as well as multimedia. So any uploaded files or images won't be retained if you just copy the code. So let's go ahead and click the fork button up here in the top right corner then click create fork and now we have a copy of this fork in our documents you want to go ahead and rename this so hit the little i and why don't you hit oops sorry hit the little i and then let's hit edit and let's rename it to jason ease Star Wars Hyperdrive Challenge and hit submit so that way it's saved. Now the goal here is that every time you press space the Millennium Falcon enters into its hyperdrive light speed. Unfortunately though there was damage and the Millennium Falcon is not functioning so if we press the space key nothing is happening. Now R2D2 looked over the code and he found issues with it that hopefully we can use our coding skills to correct. So let's go ahead and hit our code editor now there's a couple things you have to know about. First, R2D2 left you comments, hints right here. And you can see where it says R2D2 and then whatever R2D2 was saying that's already been translated from droid language to English so you can read it. There's also four programs here and we only need to worry about the mainframe. The mainframe is what actually controls the hyperdrive and the Millennium Falcon. That's what we have to troubleshoot. The code for space, the code for light speed, and the code for warnings are all background programs that are allowing the code to function, to make sure that we have stars, to make sure that we don't get sucked into a vertex or a black hole. And you can see that R2D2 left us a comment saying that this code appears to be working correctly. So there's no need to edit any of these programs. Just right here, it looks like R2D2 says that part of the code for the mainframe appears to be damaged or missing. Let's see more below. So let's scroll down and look at his comments. It looks like we have a comment here in function setup. The code appears to be working correctly. We have a comment in function draw. This code appears to be correct. Uh oh. Our falcon function, this code has errors from the damage and needs to be repaired. So it looks like we have some issues with our hyperdrive functionality, although it looks like the create falcon function appears to be working correctly. So there's only a couple issues here. And then we have another message from R2D2 saying that there's no code to trigger the hyperdrive when space is pressed. It looks like we can't enter light speed without it. So it looks like there's supposed to be a function key typed here and it's missing. And it looks like we have another preload function that's functioning correctly. So we have a working code here. So we only have two things we gotta worry about. Key pressed appears to be missing and our hyperdrive code appears to have errors with it. So let's leave the hyperdrive alone because if we don't have a key pressed or a key type function, hyperdrive can't start anyway. So let's just go below R2D2's comments here and let's drop in our function key type. It's very important that you keep proper punctuation or else we're gonna make more errors for the Millennium Falcon. So make sure that key type has a capital T I automatically opened it with an open bracket and then closed it with a closed bracket. Now it looks like they're trying to use space, the space bar to trigger the hyperdrive. So let's go ahead and drop in an if key equals equals. Now for the space bar, it's pretty simple. You have to put a single quotation, space, single quotation. And that actually represents the space bar. Then we need to drop in our and, and key is pressed, capital I, capital P. This makes sure that it only is occurring when the key is actually being pressed, not all the time after we initiate the key. Well, if this happens, 
Well, what do we want to trigger here? Let's see. What looks like it starts the hyperdrive? There's a variable called hyperdrive. Let's see what happens. Let's go up to our global. Variable hyperdrive false. When powered on, this launches into light speed. So if false is when it's powered off, I'm guessing true would be powered on. So we want spacebar to initiate the hyperdrive to be true. Let's scroll back down to our key typed. If key equals equals space, hyperdrive equals true. Let's close if space is pressed. And now we only want this to be happening when we're pressing space. We're going to add a redundancy, an else statement. Else hyperdrive equals false. Close else notch trigger hyperdrive. All right. That looks pretty good. So if we press space, hyperdrive is true. If we're not pressing space, else hyperdrive is false. So let's press play and give space a click here. All right, still not entering hyperdrive. So something else might be, must be wrong, but we don't have any error messages. If you have an error message that pops up, there must be a typo with your function here on how to actually initiate space. So make sure that you don't have any typos, any error messages before proceeding. We also don't really need R2's comments anymore. So let's get rid of his warning comments because it looks like we fixed that. All right, let's scroll up here to our function function. So this code has errors from damage and must be repaired. Hyperdrive functionality. Let's remove the comments here in front of all these lines. Looks like R2 grayed them out for us. So we have a couple error messages here. What's going on? This error message says expected a parenthesis to match instead of saw is. So it doesn't like the word is. In an if statement, if something is true, do we use the word is? It looks like the syntax isn't correct. Well, let's look at what we have here that we just did for key press. We said that something equals equals. We didn't use the word is. So let's replace is with equals equals. Well, that got rid of that error message. That's pretty cool. Let's press play. All right, we still have an issue on line 62. Let's go look at line 62. Warning, not on, question mark. That doesn't look right. And processing is looking for something else. It's looking for a semicolon. It's looking for things that aren't here. How do we make something not true? We must turn off the warnings here. Well, let's go up to global. Is warnings defined? I don't see warnings here. Let's try to say that warnings is false. So warning, if it's not true, it must be false. Looks like that got rid of all of our error messages. Let's press play. We still have our red lights, but let's press space. Oh, it looks like we are now in hyperdrive and away from danger. All of our lights are green and blue. Hyperdrive has begun. It looks like we saved the day, guys. Nice job using your coding skills. Make sure you save this and submit this to assignment number eight, Hyperdrive Challenge on the Open Processing class. You can submit by hitting the share button, selecting your class, and scrolling down to the correct assignment. So again, the Hyperdrive Challenge assignment to actually submit this project to. Great work.